It is my honor to introduce to you Major General Vincent E. Benny Bowles, Class of 76, and the highest ranking officer to date from the Niagara ROTC program. For all of us, you make us proud to be part of this university. Join me in a warm welcome for our guest of honor, General Thank you very much, Dick, for uh, the great work you've done today, keeping this uh, herd of cats moving. And thanks to all of you for being here today and honoring the national treasures with your time and attention. The national treasures that are here today. If you ever go to the movies a lot, or you begin to watch television series, they can't help themselves. A theme always comes through somewhere in the series or somewhere in the movie trailer. And it's the theme about the tension about a reunion. Our character gets notified that there's a reunion, 20th, 25th, whenever, do you want to go? And we get to watch the character go through all the tension of should I, shouldn't I, will I, won't I? Then what's going to happen when I get there? And you see them work themselves into a frenzy. After last night and this morning, I can guarantee that the people that write those scripts don't come to Niagara for reunions. They do not come to Niagara for reunions. Uh, you can't help it. When you crest Mount Eagle Ridge and start to hit this place in the fall, the feelings start to come back. The memories, the notions. It was all brought back for me last night when I ran into my first classmate. My butt hadn't cleared the door of that front thing and my first classmate was standing there. And he turned and looked at me, ready to just, you know, fill me with emotion and talk about all the wonderful things. And he looked at me and he says, Vinnie Bowles, Black Russians. <laughs> And before Dick takes his foreign area officer experience and tries to recall if that's a tribe of people in the Caucasus, <laughs> Dick it isn't. <laughs> Last night and this morning as I was walking around with you, I was reminded again, as I always am at gatherings like this, about the ultimate difference between a fairy tale and a war story. See, a fairy tale starts out once upon a time. And a war story starts out when two soldiers look at each other and say, now listen up, this is no BS. After that, there is no difference between the two of them. And I laughed an awful lot at some of the war stories I heard last night and this morning. Uh, things like this don't just happen because somebody sits there and claps their fingers and wishes for it to happen. They happen because people put their hearts into it and their hands on it, and they do it all the time. Uh, a really special thank you to Father LeBesque for taking the time to make time in the universe. He is a busy guy on a weekend like this. And to make time for this to happen is just truly magical and just representative of how special Niagara is. I'd also want to thank Art Cardilla and the great team in the alumni office. And I want to really thank my new battle buddy, which is Jacqueline Rossi. She's the gal who you don't see here now because she's running somewhere else. But let's just give them all a great hand. dancer on the ROTC department. Have you seen these cadets walking around today? Have you seen these kids? I tell the truth. We ever look that good on a Saturday morning? <laughs> I mean, Paul well done. I mean, he's been here since June. Don't screw it up. Keep doing what you're doing. White friends are working fine. And he had a lot of help. I noticed uh, Pat Seuss, Colonel retired Pat Seuss, who uh, was instrumental in doing so many great things in the program. Doc, good to see you today. Thanks to have you. I reserve special mention for the driving force who got us all here today. Jack Mitchell, class of 51. <sighs> what can I say about Jack? There I was, newly retired, about six, eight weeks retired. My phone rings. I answer the phone and say, Bowles residence. Bowles, Mitchell here. Yes, sir. Uh, 
We're going to do a uh, Pantheon of Niagara Warriors. Yes, sir. You're in it. Yes, sir. I'm happy to be there. We're going to induct you in the ROTC Hall of Fame. I'll take care of those details. You, you just be there. Here's the date. Write it down. Yes, sir. I got it. He's moving me around like a PFC on paper. <laughs> then he, you know, I, I've been retired like about, like I said, you know, a couple of months. Then he says, a little pregnant pause, he says, now I need to ask you something. I said, yeah. He says, you still fit in your uniform? <laughs> I said, sir, I haven't gone to see that quickly. Okay, I'm, I'm hanging in there, all right. They said, well, just make sure you do, because I got a lot of these guys who say they can, and then they find out they can't. So make sure. So I said, yes, sir, I got it. We exchanged a few more pleasantries, and I hung up the phone. And I gave my wife a kiss, and she said, where are you going? I said, the gym. <laughs> and there I've been. Uh, I spoke, Jack's not with us today. I spoke with Marilyn yesterday at great length, and we had a wonderful conversation, his wife down in Florida. Uh, Jack's doing well. She expects to get him back uh, today or tomorrow. I, I, I don't know if secretly she was enjoying the small vacation. I didn't have the courage to ask her. But uh, she was not overcome, but she was overjoyed at the feelings of camaraderie and the great feelings that have come her way. And I just ask that we all keep Jack in our prayers. This is being videotaped, and please join me in a warm thank you to Jack Mitchell and his family. Ud omne te cognoscant. Ud omne te cognoscant. When you come to Niagara, wherever you come from, that begins to imbue itself in you. Ud omne te cognoscant. That all may learn. You begin your exposure as you come here to a values-based growth process a values-based growth process where you realize it's not ultimately about you, but it's about how you get to impact others and how you learn to grow and open yourself to be impacted and be loved and be touched by others. And it begins here. And in this values-based journey at Niagara, we change. And I would offer that even more importantly, we are given the strength to deal with the challenges and changes that come at us in this uncertain world. It starts here. That's the reason I believe so many of us have enjoyed and flourished in Army life. It is not hard to assimilate the values of an Army life. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. It is not hard to imbue those within yourself when you have been at this place and been from this place. It's about taking care of the national treasures entrusted to us. And we learn the meaning of taking care of each other when we come to a place like Niagara. We got the opportunity to lead and take care of the national treasures entrusted to us in some not so nice places. Korea, Vietnam, Panama, Grenada, Iraq, Afghanistan, the Horn of Africa, and so many other places. Even the beltways of Washington and the corridors of the Pentagon. Again and again and again we went. We didn't get to pick our missions. We went where we were sent. Not because it was easy. Not because it was convenient. But because it was necessary and because the nation turned and looked at us and said, we need you to do this. And we went. Some did not come back. We were truly blessed. A great many of us in that event were not alone. We were accompanied by a cast that time and time again gave an Oscar-worthy winning performance. And I'm talking about your family. Time and time again, they would look at us and give that Oscar-winning performance. It's okay, honey. I'd love to go to Fort Polk. <laughs> I hear Okinawa is nice this time of year. 
Vietnam is only a year. We'll live with your mother. We'll be fine. <laughs> and again and again and again, they stood there for us. To our families. Thank you. This is your day too. Your love, your care, your understanding, your patience when you couldn't understand what it was we were doing enabled all of us who love this nation so much to serve this nation in the way we must. And let's please give a warm round of applause for our families. Since its beginning as an ROTC program, there's been a lot of change in the Purple Legal Battalion. Yeah, it was a mandatory program, and it was a voluntary program. Then there were struggles in the program. Then there was a decline of the program. Then there was a, revital it was a revitalization of the program, where it was ranked number one among 272 programs in the country. revitalization has brought a program out that's even stronger than I've ever seen it. I, I share Dick's thought. I don't know if I'd get commissioned today. I don't know if I'd meet the standard to get commissioned today. I, I mean that as serious as it's coming. And thank you for all the kind words to me, but those of you sitting in the front rows here know the drill. I didn't do this alone. I didn't do this alone. In my mind's eye right now, I can see all those teammates. I can see all those teammates taking care of me, bucking me up, picking me up when I was down, pulling me down when I was a little higher than I should have been, and again and again there to take care of me. Regardless of the changes or the challenges, the Purple Legal Battalion has stayed true to the nation. Niagara and the ROTC program are special to me personally for a very simple reason. I did not come to Niagara for something at the age of 17. I was running from something. I wasn't running to Niagara, I was running away from something. And by the age of 19, I had found what I wanted to do with my life and I found the lady I'd spend the rest of my life with. You each have your story like that. You each have your story like that and a great weekend like this gives us the time to share that. I got back more than I ever gave this nation. And I got back more than I ever gave Niagara. I learned that when you give, you get back far more. It's the only way to ensure that those words become reality. But unless they come, no Scott, that all may learn, that all may grow. Now, I can't predict the future the program has been here since the 1930s, about 80 years. I can't predict the future any more than I could have predicted what will happen in the past. But I guarantee the following. I guarantee the following. Our nation will be threatened. That nation will need an army. That army will need leaders. And this great institution will continue to provide them for this nation. They can't help it. They are living your legacy. They are living the legacy that each of you has lent this institution by your service, by your spirit, and by your hearts. I'd ask as we close that we keep those who are in harm's way today and their families in our thoughts and prayers. They go for us. They believe that we are worth it. We are worth it their service and their sacrifice. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity to rededicate ourselves to be the type of citizens worthy of that service and sacrifice. May God continue to bless us all. May he continue to keep Niagara as vibrant as ever. Continue to produce great cadets out of this ROTC program. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you all so much.